This is the actual statement. It's not long. Whereas we, the bishops of the United Methodist Church in Africa, remain committed to the teachings of the Bible and to the doctrines of the Christian faith and heritage. Very good. Whereas the African Initiative was created to advocate for African causes, issues, and representation in the United Methodist Church agencies and gatherings such as the General Conference. Fine. Whereas the Africa Initiative has lost its original goal of helping the United Methodist Church in Africa. That's not so fine. Whereas the Africa Initiative is now working with the Wesleyan Covenant Association to destroy our United Methodist Church. What, where are we going? And whereas the Africa Initiative is working with and supporting the Global Methodist Church, a denomination that has not been recognized by the General Conference, therefore we, the bishops of the United Methodist Church in Africa, declare the following. Three things. We will dissociate from any activities of the Africa Initiative and will not allow any activities of the Africa Initiative in our areas. We will not allow or entertain any activities of the Wesleyan Covenant Association who are wrongly influencing God's people in our areas. And three, we will not tolerate anyone giving false information about the United Methodist Church in our areas. We will continue to be shepherds of all our God's people throughout our beloved continent. So not only is this a repudiation of the, the protocol, this is a repudiation of uh, any conservative faction whatsoever that does not want to stay within the United Methodist Church. Now, on the front end, I'm sympathetic to this if we are of the mind that the United Methodist Church is the only church of Jesus Christ. You cannot leave the only church of Jesus Christ. I don't think any United Methodists believe that. I think we understand that we are one branch of a larger family tree, which is the church of Jesus Christ, in which case... Is it the cardinal sin to separate? No, that seems a bit ridiculous. However, that's what it's being treated as here. The Global Methodist Church is a separate break-off. The, the Wesleyan Covenant Association is here to facilitate those conversations and help con congregations discern if they belong there. They say, nope, uh, the Africa Initiative that is, is facilitating this is bad and corrupt. They no longer have the interests of the UMC at heart. And from now on, anything they're promoting related to this is persona non grata in, the, in Africa, in the continent of Africa. What's to be said about this, Kira Calhoun? Wilson. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so I was really confused when I first read this. Right. Let's be real. Like, it's kind of contradicting. In a way, in my mind, okay. I see it as like, okay, who's actually speaking here, first of all? Second of all, there's 20 or 21 bishops in Africa. How many of them actually signed it, right? Yeah, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 signed it, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, were not there, but they're sympathetic to it. Okay, so sympathetic and agreeing. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, so, right? We have these bishops who have, again, placed this document in front and said, okay, this is what we believe mm -hmm. as the United Methodist Church of Africa. Is this all of Africa? No. So we're speaking again to a continent that is not in agreement, period. Sure. Right? One, this goes to relation to our bishops here as well. We're not all in agreement. Okay, we get this. But... Let me be clear. The Wesleyan Covenant Association is not a one side or one shoe fits all or whatever saying we want to put here, yeah, right? Yeah. I believe the purpose of the Wesleyan Covenant Association is to facilitate these conversations on both sides, to allow a separation nicely. Yeah, we could have a conversation where what does your congregation believe? Right. What is your doctrinal predisposition? Well, if it's that, you'd probably be happier in the UMC. You right. should say in the UMC, if it's this, we think the UMC is going to be hostile and you might consider joining this. That's all they're doing. And right. is it wrong to help people discern no. what covenant relationship they belong yeah. in? I agree. And right here, this is saying that we we are not going to be a part of this because yeah. you're destroying the United Methodist Church. What a stab, right? That's an untrue statement. Right here, we're saying we're done with these untrue statements, but you just put an untrue statement and your document. Well, it's the realm of like, well, in a sense, it is true. I mean, stick in a, fork, a stick a fork in it, the UMC is done. The dream of the UMC right. has, the dream of the United Methodist Church was a big tent group where we would have a lot of theological diversity and all still work together. It was a pipe dream. It doesn't work. 
It was an experiment. Experiment's over. It doesn't work. Right. It doesn't work. Let's move on. And it's not a sin to acknowledge that. What's happened now is power politics because Absolutely. that's what this devolves into. Yeah. It's, it's the only way it was ever going to go, given human nature, given the nature of the necessity of doctrinal agreement within a covenant community. So, so to say that we're destroying the United Methodist Church is half true. The, the other half that's important is it's already done. Right, it's, it's already done. dead. You're in denial if you want to believe that it can continue on the way yeah. it has. And I say that as a per- my grandfather was a United Methodist pastor, my parents are United Methodist pastors. Stick in a for- a stick a fork in it, it's done. And I know there are a lot of people, it breaks their heart. It kind of breaks my heart to hear that. I kind of cried whenever I was reading Mendy Dennison's letter on that last mm-hmm. week. Yeah. But just because it makes us sad does not mean we're entitled to denial. Right. I, I think there's a place for both sides, right? And it, it doesn't mean that we're together. It doesn't mean that we have to be under an umbrella. I mean, some of my dear friends in the Oklahoma Annual Conference are on the complete opposite side of me. And we can get together and we can have some of the most meaningful conversations that mm-hmm. I've ever had that are purposeful and driven and Jesus-focused. Mm-hmm. But we don't agree on what the scripture actually says, but we can walk away together and say it's okay because we still love each other because that's what Jesus wants us to do. Mm. And we we eliminate the nastiness. We eliminate everything that goes on that people think actually go on, right? We're able to have this good friendship. And while I would love that to be the United Methodist Church, as a newer Methodist per se, I would love to see this denomination stay. Yeah. But it's it's things like this that cause us to be divisive. Yeah, the, the, the thing that's particular to our era right now, and you see it all over, is the accusation of disinformation and lies. Yes. And... And it's not that nobody ever spreads disinformation and lies, but if you're going to level that charge, you have to be particular about what those are and why it's wrong. Yeah. You have to cite your sources. And the thing that's a problem is, and I think it, well, James focused on this last week. He said, Donald Trump with the accusation of fake news. You know, it's fake news. And he said that, and that's his personality. But to imagine that now we can all like act like Donald Trump and just dismiss anything we don't like as fake news is really embarrassing, you know. Um, the other thing we haven't talked about yet, I said it about the Filipino church. It's been widely known in our denomination for a long time that the African church is not at all sy- sympathetic to liberalism at all. Um, there are individuals there that are sympathetic. They've, I saw they even got one reconciling denomina- or church, local mm-hmm. church there, which is amazing and impressive in, in yeah. some demographic sense. But the vast majority are very conservative traditionalists and their their predisposition. Yeah. So a lot of leftists look at this response and go, well, I guess not. I guess they're majority liberal. They're right. with us. And the assumption there is that the, the, the general will of the bishops reflects the general will of the people, when actually it's quite possible and even likely that this does not reflect the state of the, Afri- the average United Methodist in Africa, that right. this is another instance I've referenced several times the UM News study that happened uh, in 2018 that showed that even the United States of America, the majority of United Methodists are traditionalist conservative. So there seems to be this phenomenon that happens not just in America, but globally, where the people that trickle up to the top are those that lean left. And how the, I, I need to dedicate, I, I'm sure there's a book on that somewhere, but for right now, that's just something that, that I'm seeing, and I don't think I can, I'm a conspiracy theorist. One thing, when you're trying to figure that out, you have to consult the voices of people who are actually over there, which is hard because people over there don't speak English. They're from a different culture. And so I, I found some, um, some comments on Facebook. You know, this got posted um, yesterday. So it was on a conservative site. Conservatives, how do we make sense out of this? So this guy, Jim McElrath, who I, I don't he's, think he's an African, but he's been there. He says, having visited and preached in the Katanga province in Congo, I believe this is as hypocritical as our bishops are in this country. The pew sitters in that area are as aghast at the sexual perversion by some of the council of bishops as we conservative evangelicals are in this country. It just spe- seems that nowhere on the planet do bishops speak for the church. Everyone should have heard the statements by bishop defenders when Bickerton was quoted as stating that this book of discipline is invalid. 
Do you know what that's from? I don't know what he's talking about there. I know that there was an issue with Bickerton. That's all that I remember. I want to, anybody who watches this later, if you know what he's talking about, send me a link because I haven't seen this. Defenders were saying no bishop can speak for the church. So I guess it's true in Africa too. Bishops don't speak for the church. Please take the shepherd's staff off of the symbol for bishops. And I'm with him till the end where I'm like, okay, well, what does the bishop's staff do? It takes a sheep that's going in the wrong way. And it, so that's what they're doing. They're saying, church, you're wrong. So we're going to yank you back in place. And in Africa, I don't think I'm making a cultural assumption. I've seen a lot of evidence to show that here in America, we don't do well with authority and bishops have to tread lightly. In Africa, bishops wield their authority much more brazenly, much more authoritatively. And these bishops, I do believe, are getting their crook and yanking their sheep and saying, get in line. Yeah. Let's look at a different uh, comment. That one's too long, but this Josh Karimi guy, um, anyone who wants to stop on this, he is a graduate of Africa University. So, brief note on that. Africa University is one of our apportionments for the general United Methodist Church. It is a college where we are year after year indoctrinating people in United Methodist way of life and doctrine. There is an accusation sometimes that right-leaning groups are spending money on the African church to sway them without even looking at African University and looking at the millions of dollars that the institution has funneled that direction to, to form sympathetic institutionalist Africans. Mm -hmm. we've, we've put thousands of people through that. Meanwhile, conservative caucus groups uh, help them get vaccines and help them get communication tools when they get to the U.S. and help them get from the airport to where they need to go. That is not the same thing. Anyway, uh, Josh Karimi, he starts taking offense at the conservatives going, this, this isn't right. But then I, I talked to him, and according to him, um, well, he ends with, most of us here in Africa don't know who is saying the truth or even the genesis of all that is happening. So people on the ground, they know what their bishops tell them. Most of them don't speak English, so they're, kind of, they're not able to read our resources. They're just going, well, the bishops say this. The Africa Initiative says this. We're just going to pick our guy. And I've seen some weird reports. I don't know if you've seen this, but there have been incidents in different annual conferences or central conferences over there where the bishop has other enemy district superintendents or other people that are trying to spread information. They get the police involved. Yeah. They get these people arrested, and they start picking one side in this American battle just so that they can get American friends and money on their side. Have you seen any of this? I have seen it. It's all over the news. It's bananas. It is crazy. Well, and it, we, we think in America it's bad. It's actually, well, and Africans at different times have, have issued statements to us going, we know that you think you're the center, but look, we have actual witchcraft here. We have uh, uh, Islamic extremists trying to kill us here. Mm -hmm. It's a much more real scenario there. Mm -hmm. And the church takes itself even more seriously there yeah. than here. So anyway, Josh Karimi, I, I think we ended at a place where he's like, you know what, if people would just speak to us the way that you're speaking to us, we could get this figured out. But the thing is, they're having to trust the voices there, and a lot of the voices there are like here, not trustworthy. Right. Um, this other African, uh, Yayuba Basil Bwela, Friends, <laughs> it's not all bishops signed. I'm laughing because it's just hard. The language barrier is hard. Therefore, any land have it on laws that land it. It takes effects on those issues of LGBTQ and homosexual activities. Finally, you can take Horse River, but not force it to drink water, which, of course, we have a similar saying in our language. Um, but this lady, Donna, tries to figure out, whose side are you on? What are you, what are you talking about? Um, and he ends up saying at the end, she says, so if I'm understanding correctly, the bishops who signed this are not speaking for the majority of the lady. And he says, all caps, absolutely correct. So this is what Africans on the ground are dealing with, that we're not being represented. Okay, I got that on there twice. Oh, this is the same guy. Let me ask some of our bishops to sign the press release. How many pressure groups do we have in Africa? You talk of the Africa Initiative. What about African Voice of Unity. I hadn't heard of these guys, mm -hmm. but I looked them up. I read some of their stuff. It's a leftist caucus group in Africa. Wow. You are biased because African Voice of Unity is advocating your position and principles. That is why you didn't condemn the African Voice of Unity. Thank God Africans have different cultures. So they're, what's happening in Africa is they're trying to centralize. So what's happened in America in our government, the executive has tried to centralize their authority so that they can exercise it on all of America. Same thing in the United Methodist Church, our executive branch is consolidating power. 
And then that's apparently what's happening in Africa as well. The, the executives there, the bishops are consolidating their power and trying to ex exercise it on the people. It doesn't look like it's going well to me. No. I'm really wondering if there's going to be any kind of collective action against their bishops. I hope so. Yeah, we can hope. Uh, is it actually going to happen? I think it's just like how many charges can be placed here in America? Is it actually being done? The answer is probably not. Yeah, well, just how much energy do people have for this stuff? You know, what we're seeing in America is a lot of the conservatives see how wrong this is, but rather than fighting, they're just saying, how much money do I need to pay you to get out of here? And, and let going, me be done. Yeah, I'm done. I, I want to get out of here. They feel like they've been fighting for a long time. Yeah. I've talked to a lot of these big church preachers, and they're going, I've been fighting this for decades, man. I'm done. 